Volkswagen has just revealed its tiny electric hatchback. This is the most important vehicle for the German automaker, probably since the Volkswagen Beetle. So let's get into it. Over at the Volkswagen newsroom, world premiere of the ID to all. I don't like the name. I get the ID stuff. I, it's just not my favorite thing. What I would like this to be called is like the Energizer Rabbit. In the United States, we got the Golf here as the Rabbit for a few different years. And how funny it would be if this was called the E-Rabbit or something of that nature. I'll see you guys down below what you want this to be called, but ID2 is probably what it will be called, unfortunately. Even though they are calling this a concept, this is going to be a production model coming in 2025. And this is the new design language. So let's go on over and pop up the images and break it down. This will be riding on Volkswagen's upcoming MEB entry platform. So for their very affordable compact cars here, you can see a torsion beam in the back. Of course, that comes as no surprise and it's such a, 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 an affordable vehicle. They're planning on selling this thing for 25,000 euros, which by the time it comes to the United States, I would assume it would be about $25,000. Looking at the design, I think it's cute. It looks like a little Volkswagen Golf or Rabbit. Now, at first glance, I thought it only had two doors, but you can see another crease back here. The second door handle is just hidden, kind of like the Prius, for example. Super minimal design, and that's perfectly fine. I absolutely love how the Golfs have looked throughout their generations, and this is definitely following right on cue here. You have the iconic C pillar here that looks great. A light bar across the back, which in my opinion, I don't feel like they need it. I think just the, the minimal two lights on each side or the two little rounded off squares would look great. And we do have some fake exhaust back here, or at least cutouts. And Volkswagen actually does fake exhaust pretty well. Um, looking at the Taos, I, I was pretty impressed at how decent that looked, even though there was nothing back there. And look, this actually has side mirrors on it instead of cameras. So they know that would be a great way to reduce costs. Now the interior is quite impressive. Of course, we have a bunch of ambient lighting that will still be probably a thing when this comes out in a couple of years. Uh, we have cloth surfaces over most areas. Of course, that's going to be the, probably the cheapest way to outfit this vehicle. I won't be surprised on upper trims, you could get uh, synthetic leather. Now you have the ID steering wheel, and this is a different steering wheel from what we've seen, let's say currently on the Volkswagen products that have a touch capacitive interface on each side of the steering wheel. We have what looks to be three different scrolly wheels here on each side. Now it could just be one big scroll wheel with I guess different partitions of it. That's a possibility as well. And it looks like we actually have physical buttons here for, I guess this could be presets or to change the information on the MID back here. And this is hard to say. These could be customizable buttons. Window controls here on the side panel. And looking at the materials, it looks like we do have some synthetic leather here at the top, some nice stitching on the door panel. So the door panels look to be pretty high quality. And going on to the dash here, we have some nice stitching as well with some soft touch materials. Uh, fabric on the dash, which I think looks great, feels pretty cozy. And then we have a large, probably a uh, 12 or 14 inch touchscreen here. And this looks like to be a 10 inch MID behind the steering wheel. Now, yesterday I posted Volkswagen is spending up to almost $200 billion on getting electrification and software right in the next five years or so. And this could be maybe our first peak of what they're looking at because their current situation is a nightmare. Uh, look, we have physical switches here and physical buttons uh, for the climate control. Now it's not the most customizable and I would like to see more switches and buttons here uh, for fan control, which this might be fan control. It's kind of hard to see as we zoom in here, but this is fan control. Yes, we have physical fan control coming back here instead of just a touch capacitive mess. So love to see that from Volkswagen. It's still minimal, but far more functional uh, than the touch capacitive junk they have going on right now. It looks like a wireless charger could be here. Here, This is just going to be your rotary dial for drive select. That is not rotary dial for drive select. This is going to be a rotary dial maybe for interaction with the screen or it could be for different driving modes. But if you look here, this is park and you have drive. So this is your drive stock to get this into forward, reverse, park, etc. And it's coming back to me. This reminds me a little bit of the ID4. I haven't driven that car in a couple of years at this point. Another image of the interior. I don't think we see anything new here maybe a little bit maybe a little bit more depth to the cargo area underneath this flo uh, like floating area we have a play and pause button on the traditional brake and gas pedals and we have a little bit more detail on these seats 
Uh, even though it's cloth here in the middle, it looks like we have synthetic leather on the outside. We have a floating headrest here with a little ID tag on it. And we also have some blue bordering seatbelts here, which looks pretty cool as well. Some finishing images here of this electric rabbit or Energizer bunny. And looking at cargo capacity, we can see even the front passenger seat folds down. And we'll compare this to uh, the Chevy Bolt today. I got a little spreadsheet up for you guys. And look, you have a panoramic roof on here that could be standard. But when we're talking about a $25,000 car, probably going to be an optional feature here. And what is this button here? I can't tell what exactly this would be. Maybe it's a button. Uh, to fold down the seats. They also provided a high quality video here that I'll play for you guys as B-roll while I read through the press release, but there's some, some things in here that we didn't see in the initial images. So here's the updated software here. Looks pretty decent. This is a customizable knob. Did I see that right? So we have a little castle there. It looks like some sort of badge, a uh, German badge of some sort. Uh, let's see here. You can customize the image there and the little scrolly wheel uh, so you have the newest era image, which is the ID era, which is more of a minimal. And then we have the, the coffer. I could be butchering that. The coffer era with the, the crest here. And then you have the, the fatter, bold uh, Volkswagen Golf era icon. That's pretty neat. I don't know if I've seen anyone having you know customizable rotary dials in their cars quite yet. And you can see the, the retroness built into the different modes here. You have a you know, cassette player going on. Looks pretty cool. Now we haven't seen images of the back here, but the back seat can fold up. That's pretty cool, which reveals additional cargo under here. Um, and it looks like we have a flat floor, which is going to be great for passenger space and leg space, etc. And even though it's a golf, I mean, this does look like to have a good amount of uh, passenger space and leg space back here. This area is probably, I mean, I don't see any vents, but it looks like it would be for USB-C or USB-A connections in the back. A better look at the seats folding down the configurations here. This thing is going to be a city dwelling or just like a you know small family Swiss army knife with the functionality here. I, I'm really enjoying it. And then we also had secret compartment is always a welcome addition. And we also had uh, ambient lighting in the back that I just noticed as well. All right, a little animation to see you later. Pretty cool. I'm digging the, oh, a little puppy dog. Or no, it's a fox. It's a, I think it's a fox. Anyways, it's super cute. Let's keep moving. This vehicle will be one of the 10 new models by 2026. Like I said, they say it's coming out in 2025. It will have a range up to 450 kilometers, as spacious as a Golf, and inexpensive as a Polo. So looking at the spreadsheet that I made for you guys, comparing it to an American EV, an entry-level EV here, which the design is not desirable to me. Uh, I, the only thing that's desirable about the Chevy Bolt, in my opinion, is its super low barrier of entry. And I hear it's a pretty decent EV overall. I haven't driven one, but it has good power for... It has good power for such a small entry-level vehicle, good range as well. It's hamstrung by its charging. So the Volkswagen E-Rabbit will have 222 horsepower, a nice 20 horsepower upgrade over the Chevy Bolt. We don't know torque figures. I said 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7 seconds, which will translate to a sub 7 seconds, 0 to 60. So it'll be roughly the same speed as a Chevy Bolt. They're both front-wheel drive, mind you. We don't know the battery size of the E-Rabbit. But they did say that it'll have a range of 450 kilometers on the WLTP. Uh, my rough, rough estimations on the EPA cycle is about 245 miles. That's something where the Chevy Bolt will have uh, a superior advantage here. But what good is that range when it takes forever to charge the Chevy Bolt? And that's where the Volkswagen ID2 e Rabbit will succeed here and probably beat out a lot of the competition, unless Tesla comes out with a $25,000 EV by 2025, which is quite possible. So I love the competition uh, ra ramping up in this segment. Car capacity, they did list, but I don't think the Chevy Bolt's front passenger seat folds forward. And we also have the, the back seat that flips up uh, and also that hidden cargo area underneath the floor in the cargo area. So the Volkswagen Rabbit is probably a little bit more versatile here. And base price, we're saying $25,000, at least they're saying 25,000 euros, but I would expect it to be around here. It might be a little bit more expensive. We'll see. But the uh, just like the Chevy Bolt, it'll qualify for the EV tax credit. I would expect them to price this as close to the Chevy Bolt as possible. 
uh, to make as much money as possible. They don't want to undercut them unless Tesla comes out and undercuts both of them, then they'll probably have to reduce prices. So I love the competition. It's really going to help out uh, people get into the first electric car. And this is where it needs to be a $25,000 vehicle, something that's an entry level like a Corolla, for example, in price. And then you also have this fast charging that is going to be a game changer for these entry level vehicles as well. Now, they said the 25,000 euros, but they actually mentioned costing less. So that's an important detail. It will come in less than 25,000 euros in 2025. Now, they mentioned it has premium innovations such as Travel Assist, IQ Light, and Electric Vehicle Route Planner. But in the press release, I don't see them expand upon that, so I'm sure we'll hear more about it in the coming years. 10 new electric vehicle models by 2026. This year, we will see the introduction of the ID3 not coming to America, uh, the ID Buzz with the long wheelbase, which is coming to America, and the ID7, which we got a camouflage version of it, I believe, at the Consumer Electronics Show. There'll also be a compact electric SUV in 2026. And in spite of the challenges, Volkswagen is also working on an electric car at a price of less than 20,000 euros. So something that would slot in below this e-rabbit or e-golf or whatever you want to call it, this ID2. This will give the car manufacturer the widest range of electric vehicles compared to its competitors. And the company is aiming to achieve an electric car share of 80% in Europe. Sorry, my kids, it's, it's spring break. So the kids are just going to be in the background yelling which I'm sure you've already heard at this point. Volkswagen passenger cars have previously based its calculations on a share of 70%. So they think they can have an 80% electric sh electric car share in Europe. Do you think they'll be able to do that? I think that's extremely lofty. I might be missing something, but uh, you know, looking at this graph here, it looks like Volkswagen has 25%. How can they get to 80% when it looks like their current market share, at least in 2021, was 25%. How do they expect to gain 25 to 80%? That makes no sense to me, especially in the competition is not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. So maybe I'm not reading into this correctly. I'm looking at the specs here. Do you think this vehicle, if it comes in around $25,000 here in North America, do you think this would be one of the top vehicles on your list? I'm looking at the specs, it does seem like the ultimate Chevy Bolt that's styled better and have better charging capacity while costing about the same and give us the same sort of power and the same hatchback functionality as well. It seems like a perfect entry level electric car for the masses, but I could also see it appealing to couples or families or anyone who has a gasoline car and this would be their, their daily driver for around town and they would have their second gasoline car for driving outside of town. That would be amazing. But even then, this thing charges very quickly. So you could, assuming there's a good infrastructure around you in your local area, you could take this out of town and not have to worry that much compared to like the Chevy Bolt. But by 2025, there could be a new Chevy Bolt that could charge a lot faster. Uh, we could also see the Tesla Model 2 or whatever they call it as well. And that thing would compete with these guys very, very well. But I'm excited for this little vehicle. I'm excited for the low barrier of entry. I'm excited for the acceleration, the looks, the functionality, the quick charging. There's nothing really bad for me to say about it. And heck, Volkswagen's even bringing back physical switches and dials into their vehicles. Praise the German car gods for that and for listening. Our prayers have been answered, but I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video and if you're excited for this e-rabbit, that's what I'm calling it. Smash the like button, subscribe for more. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.